Burkhan Books, which comes out regularly with really great film studies books, has recently released this gem, which is uh, Visible Man in the Spirit of Film, two early film theory works by Bela Balaz. And the preface to this book is particularly interesting. There's lots to say in other videos, but to begin with the preface, and by the way, uh, Visible Man is called Der Sichtbare Mensch in German. The preface is particularly interesting because Balaz presents himself as a defender of film studies. The book was published in 1924 when universities apparently had little or no interest in film. And Balaz says in the preface that film not only you know, has the right to be considered an art, but that it was actually standing at the door of the academy begging for permission to enter, or asking for permission to enter is what he says. And this is high rhetoric to be sure, but Balaz seems to be suggesting that it is not just that scholars are neglecting film as an art during this period, but that they were also suspicious of theorizing it. So on that basis, much of the preface to Visible Man is devoted to a defense of theory in general, and not just of theorizing film, but how that theory is one of the best things that could happen to film in order to increase our appreciation of, of what it is. Now, one of the first things he says is that theory can inspire great works. And in order to do so, and this is a very interesting point, theory doesn't even have to be valid. It can help inspire and create and inform the creation of great works of art without even being a correct theory. And he points out how all kinds of great things have emerged from false conjectures. Many, many discoveries have come from theories that were completely wrong. And fans of science fiction know that cinematic gems of all kinds have emerged from bunk science. Uh, and other genres also come from completely crazy theories that have no bearing on reality. So Balaz is sort of celebrating the fact that people come up with theories and seeing them as great producers of new things. Another thing that he says about theory is that theory is something that endows things that exist in the world with the dignity of meaning, and that's the phrase he uses, the dignity of meaning. He says that meaning is not some kind of gift that's just given to things out of nowhere. No, we need humans to discover the meaning in things. And there seems to be some anxiety for Balaz that film is being ignored by the academic world precisely because those who are best at recognizing meaning things aren't making that effort. So the question is why? One main reason is that because, f because film was perceived to be a popular art, it was therefore undignified. Blas doesn't go so far as to mention the situation in America, but it's important to note that circa 1920s, film was often thought to belong to the lowbrow and the lower classes, uh, one main reason being that it appealed so strongly to immigrants. Uh, for, in for the immigrant population, title cards, for instance, were irrelevant, and keep in mind that at the time, having title cards was already a denigration to film's greatness, and Balaz talks about how film, films with title cards are somehow reducing their value because they're trying to have a literary uh, character to them when it's just simply not needed. The film should be able to do this all on its own. But nonetheless, for immigrants, they could understand the story without knowing a word of English. And so that is, it's said, that's why they became such a huge audience for, for films. Um, and specifically, you know, American content films. They couldn't read American novels, uh, couldn't appreciate other aspects of American media, so film became particularly appealing to them. And because film appealed so strongly to this group of people, the highbrow folks used this as an excuse to denigrate both the cinema and its audience at the same time. So there is a wide-scale denigration of film based on perception stemming from class. Now, all of this said, Balas sees in the emergence of film new possibilities for theory because theory was at the time moving away from grand sweeping statements about the meaning of the universe, and Balas saw the potential in film and its theorization for helping theory buckle down to particular concepts. Theory could get away from these grand statements and telescope and be microscopic, and all the more so since film was itself a kind of microscope. It, the film camera was being used to structure very complex stories based on controlled compositions of time and action and events. 
But the danger for Balaz is that theory has also the potential to lead to standards and measures that people could use to judge films and create really absurd standards that nullify art, particularly when the standards are used to evaluate painting or some other art. Some other standard of, of judgment uh, are applied to film, so how you judge a, a painting is applied to film is completely absurd. And he gives a really funny example to suggest this absurdity. For instance, uh, he points out that the airplane is not a bad vehicle simply because it's not useful for traveling along streets. And likewise, film is not necessarily not art simply because its methods don't fit the conventions of how we study any other art. Now, ultimately, for Balaz, there is really no reason to apologize for theory, particularly when it comes to film, because he says if you love the material, your mind will keep thinking about it after you've seen the film, and you'll be playing around with the story and the techniques by which it is represented. Uh, and so thinking about those two things, I mean, you have to think about the technique by which a story is represented in order to think about the story at some fundamental level. And he says that doing this is already to theorize about film. It's an after-the-fact playing around with how the film worked and how it produced a story in your mind and you're juggling different concepts and also thinking about other possibilities about how that story might have played out and so then you would need to frame in your mind the various ways that it could have been different and you would do so cinematically and he says that this is already theory now he thinks that people don't like that because the word theory itself is repulsive I don't know if theory has that tone anymore, perhaps it does uh, amongst certain people, but I would add to this idea that thinking about film after watching a movie is inherently theoretical. I would say that actually making a film is also theoretical. All films are the result of some sort of theoretical engagement with a problem. So for instance, a bunch of people once asked, how are we going to tell a story based on the Wizard of Oz, right? This book that pre-existed uh, before anybody decided to make a movie of it. And so all kinds of theories had to be tested and falsified during the process of making it at many levels of production, but ultimately something came out the other end, and a whole lot of people have agreed that the final product is pretty good and worthy of continued consideration. So I think that we make films through theory as well, and that's probably one of the finest defenses of theory that Balaz might have included there. Uh, and in other parts of the book, he does get into that, actually. Now, finally, Balaz talks about how theory is related to pleasure, and this is a very important point at the end of the preface. But there's also a bit of a contradiction that I'm not quite sure how he wants to resolve that. He says that cinema is a simple pleasure, like a stimulant or like alcohol, and it should never be an educational establishment. He even says, thank God it's not an educational establishment. Yet, it's, he says that it's only through being educated in film theory that one can really have the fullest possible enjoyment of the cinema, which seems to suggest to me that film is not really a simple pleasure at all, but it's uh, something that has numerous complexities that need a certain sophisticated approach to understanding and feeling the depth of what's there. And Balaz is quick to point out that, you know, the cost of cinema making a movie is not merely monetary. In order to produce films at the level of complexity that require a complex theory to fully enjoy, a film costs not just money, but intelligence and taste and passion and the devotion of actors and screenwriters and so on, talent in other words. And those are things that arguably all the money in the world could never really buy. Um, you need, you need a, a collaboration of all kinds of elements, and it happens to be that money sort of is deeply involved in it. But at the end of the day, there's things that happen. There's money poured into films that are just crap at the end, right? So it's, it's not really about money at the end of the day. So... What Balaz is pointing out there is that understanding the economic processes and the artistic processes and something of the genius of all the people involved in making a film is really the key to unlocking the full pleasures that cinema has to offer us. And so that's part of theory, um, knowing those things. 
And so Balaz concludes his introduction or his preface to Visible Man by saying that if we want outstanding cinema, we're simply going to have to learn about how outstanding cinema works, and not just so that we can make it, because theory is something that can inform the making of films, but also so that we can perceive it at the highest possible levels. 